Hey guys, this is your next fun. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, evaluate and communicate evidence that compares and contrasts the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. So, we've been talking about cells and organ systems, and we're sort of floating in between um, all of these systems that are working together. And we're going to talk, starting now, uh, building to more complex systems with our organisms and how they reproduce and the advantages and disadvantages. So when we talk about asexual reproduction, we're going to be talking about the more simple organisms. So if we're thinking about our kingdoms and our domains, we're talking about archaea and bacteria and even when we talk about eukarya, we'll be talking about like our fungi in the asexual stuff. But then when we get to the sexual reproduction, we're talking about plantae and animaliae. So at the top of your paper, you have two spots for definitions. And so we're going to define some terms first. We're going to define asexual reproduction as the reproduction that occurs in organisms with just one parent. So write that down up there also include produces genetically identical offspring and in science class we call those daughter cells all right so moving on to sexual reproduction is the reproduction that occurs in more complex organisms it requires two parents produces offspring that are not genetically identical and this occurs in plants and animals so make sure you got those two definitions written down if you need to pause this or rewind it make sure you got everything we wrote for in red plus the stuff that was already on the slide alright now we're going to look at this chart and this chart basically compares um, asexual and sexual reproduction so you can see the advantages and disadvantages laid out right next to each other and why some things might be an advantage for one and a disadvantage for another so first we're going to start with that very first left hand column is going to be what we're comparing and then you have the asexual reproduction column and the sexual reproduction column so we'll fill those out as we go down so for parents I just told you Asexual reproduction requires one parent, and sexual reproduction requires two. Um, next, genetic info. So when we talk about that, we're talking about, like in the definition, we said in asexual reproduction that the offspring are going to be identical to parents, and there's going to be no variation if this is very... this would not be a good analogy but if that cell had blue eyes that was the original cell when it went through asexual reproduction it would have blue eyes there'd be no variation if it had two chromosomes it would have two chromosomes so there'd be no variation um, and then in sexual reproduction it's basically the opposite it's got mixed genetic information think about you and your brothers and sisters you don't look identical to them even though you came from your parents because there was two if asexual reproduction occurred you would be identical copies oh, a little technology glitch there sorry all right so moving on to advantages we have um, one mate in asexual reproduction there's just one you don't need to find somebody else. You just got to be, have yourself. Um, it's quick because of that, and it takes less energy. So on the flip side, in sexual reproduction, um, variation and unique is an advantage because of disease and genetic deformities and mutations. It's good to have the variation. It helps get rid of um, mutations. So it in with protecting 
or with getting rid of the genetic mutation that's considered protecting the organism because it'll weed out the bad stuff. Um, so, yeah. Oops, another glitch. Sorry. All right, disadvantages. For asexual, it's limited. There's no variety. And if there's a genetic disorder, there's a genetic disorder. There's no getting rid of it because... It's an exact copy. So if the cell has um, arthritis, then the next cell is going to have arthritis, and the next cell is going to have arthritis. Whatever's there is going to stay there because it is an identical copy. Whereas in asexual, because there's two organisms, it requires more time, energy, and effort. Think about that. Makes kind of makes sense. All right. Um, Everything, when there's more, the more people are involved, the more complex things become. So the more time, energy, and effort things take. Oh, speaking of complexity. Um, in asexual reproduction, um, it's usually simple organisms. So think about this. When we talk about flashing back to our kingdoms, what kingdoms are simple organisms in? Um, how about archaea and bacteria? All right. And then in sexual reproduction, it is going to be complex organisms like humans and animals. All right. So we got to have some examples we're going to talk about. And the first couple we're going to talk about are all going to be asexual reproduction. And on your chart, on your paper, you have some space like right under here where it says examples of organism and your box is bigger, you might want to draw this over there. Um, and what this is like three in one. Regeneration, segmentation, and fragmentation are all examples of asexual reproduction. And what happens is the part becomes regrown. So it regrows the parts. And let me erase this for a second so you can see. Okay, so this is called a planera. And if we took this planera and we just looked at this beginning piece right here under my green arrow. Oops, there went my green arrow. Right there under my red arrow. And we cut that planera in thirds. You would see that this head right here grows a full body, that the middle segment right there grows a full body, and this tail segment grows a full body. So if you had one planera and you cut it in thirds, it would make three new ones all of that one organism, and they would all be genetically identical because they went through some form of either regeneration, segmentation, or fragmentation. Depends on what part grows back, depends on which term you use. All right, so next is gonna be binary fission. I forgot to write that term down, so hang on a second while I get it up there. Um, prokaryotes go through binary fission. Um, it, all it is is one cell that splits in half. Hold on, here comes my term, there it is. Binary fission. So make sure you wrote binary fission up there. Prokaryotes go through that. And what's an example of a prokaryote that we talked about in class? Bacteria, correct. And to draw this again over here on this side where you have more room. All you're going to do is just draw one cell and then draw it splitting in half. All right, next our example is budding. Budding is when a part sprouts off the parent you can see where I just circled it right there on the right is the sprout came off the side. Eventually that sprout will drop down and then plant next to the parent and it will be an identical copy right next to it. All right, another example is runners. Basically, runners are just the offshoot of a parent plant. Like on the strawberry plant, you can see right here, there's green. Well, that's not a good color to use. And then you can see there's a runner and then some more green. It's just growing 
um, vines grow that way on the ground. All right, another example is cloning. Cloning is the most complex of ways for organisms to reproduce asexually. And in this format, it has to occur in a laboratory. There was Dolly the sheep, and Dolly was a clone of the mother cells. There was tons of problems with cloning, which we'll talk about later on. It's too long to talk about right now. But you're making an identical copy of a cell or an organism at that organism's place in time when you make the copy. You're not going to revert back to the very beginning. It's complex. We'll talk about it later. So Dolly was an exact replica. All right, now we're going to talk about some sexual reproduction examples. So we're going over to this column. And the first thing we're going to talk about is fertilization. Fertilization occurs when gametes, which are sex cells, which is basically the sperm or the egg, sperm for male and egg for female, become fertilized. So fertilization occurs when the sperm fertilizes the egg. And gametes is a very scientific term for sex cells or for the generalization of sperm and egg. Our next term is plant pollination. This is also found in the sexual reproduction column. And it's very similar to talking about fertilization in humans. It's the same for plant pollination. Plants have female and male parts. In a plant, there's in the male part, the pollen is actually sperm. And it actually fertilizes the ovule or the egg of the female plant. And if you want to draw, um, maybe not. We'll not draw. Um, actually, it looks like this. It's this, and it's got this part here, and this part here are the male parts. And then this part is the center part of the flower. All right. And then our next term is meiosis. Meiosis occurs only in our sex cells and creates four new daughter cells. That means the offspring, there's going to be four cells instead of just one cell copied. Um, it divides twice. We'll talk about that in more detail in the coming weeks. All right, now we're jumping back to the asexual side. I told you, um, well, I didn't tell you, but I was having problems with my slides earlier. You saw those white slides. They jumped around. Um, so we're jumping back to the asexual side to add a couple more under this side. This is mitosis. And it's M-I-T-O-S-I-S, -S, in case you can't read my handwriting. And mitosis happens in every cell of our bodies except our sex cells. So it happens in your toe cells, your skin cells, your nose cells, your eye cells, your lung cells, every single cell we have except your sex cells. And it goes through different um, stages which we're going to skip talking about because you don't need to learn the phases, but it goes through interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, which are different stages of how the cell divides when it's copying its DNA and moving it from one cell to the other. I'm actually going to, oh, it's genetically identical. You do need to write that. And it creates two new cells. And then I'm going to fast forward through all this other stuff. All right. So that was mitosis. Next, we have spores. Um, spores are found with ferns, mosses, and mushrooms. So let's talk about mosses and mushrooms and spores. Where do we think we talked about them when we talked about kingdoms and domains? Were they in archaea, bacteria, or eukarya under fungi? Mushrooms are fungi. So, 
those also go through asexual reproduction. All right, so you should have on your left-hand column, every, in this column, every box should be full. In this column, you should have four boxes left at the bottom that are not filled with sexual reproduction. The only examples you have there are fertilization, plant pollination, and meiosis. All right, make sure you got all your notes because you're going to have a quiz on tomorrow. Go back and copy down if you need to review any.